Hey, and welcome into Shockerland. I'm Billy Byler with Kyle Amos, and uh, welcome to episode number four. We're Ooh. talking Shocker basketball, men's basketball, and here's what we're going to do this week. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the Baylor game, a uh, good quality win for the Shockers, go into this uh, South Dakota State game, and then look ahead a little bit uh, to what the Shockers have done. And then at the end, we've got a couple rants, I think. Uh, we're going to talk about the experience of watching a game uh, at Coke Arena, and uh, the good and the bad. Yes. Okay. So uh, let's dive right in. Um, we are, we got to move because we are on the hot seat, so to speak. Kind of literally, literally <laughs> kind of literally, if you can see. An actual the, uh, fire. There's a fire it's going. A warm back here. In uh, the set that my wife created that was definitely not for our <laughs> Shockers podcast. But, um, yeah, it's cold outside. So another good reason that I think basketball is the greatest sport ever, it is indoors. It is. Yes. So indoors is great. Um, but uh, let's start. Um, I guess we'll start with Baylor. We'll go in order. Okay. I want to talk more about South Dakota State than I do Baylor. That I would not have guessed that I would say that sentence <laughs> um, at any point in my life, but uh, I do. But we will get to South Dakota State. There's so much to, to break down from that game, uh, a close win for the Shockers. Let's go to Baylor first. Baylor was ranked, uh, still is, still will be, yep. um, but that was a quality win for the Shockers. Uh, I kind of wrote the story on that, and um, it, it was the big win, the signature win. Not Let's not go too far on it, but it was a good quality win that the Shockers kind of needed, right? They did need it. Yeah. I mean, it's, they, Baylor was number 16 at the time at, in Waco. So getting yeah, a road, road win, especially against a top 25 opponent, is huge. And like you mentioned in your article, this this was an opportunity that the Shockers really haven't taken advantage of the past two or three seasons in the non-conference. So to get this win helps them immensely for seating purposes come Selection Sunday and just looks good on the resume, helps their... Uh, their you know ranking and everything. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm a guy. I I like the hot takes. Okay, I like to stay say the big demonstrative <clears throat> things. Maybe even exaggerate a little. That's me. Um, I try not to do that in my story about how important it was for the Shockers to beat Baylor. Um, but but it was. It was important. Could we have argued that before that win? Was there a was there at least a little bit of a reputation that the Shockers couldn't win the big game? It had, it had been a while, let's just say that, since they had a really big win against a quality opponent, against a ranked opponent. Um, when was the last big one? I mean, you had Dayton in the NCAA tournament, but uh, it, it had been a while, maybe. I think, you know, that Ohio State game to get them to the Final Four, <laughs> was that the last time they had a big against a ranked opponent win? It would not not a ranked opponent win. Yeah, I know they've beaten Northern Iowa when they were yeah, like ten or yeah. something, um, and they beat Utah when they were twenty fourth, I believe. And so they they've had a few top twenty five wins throughout the years. But you're right, we the Shockers have don't get a lot of these opportunities. They'll get more of them in the new conference. Yeah, but that yeah. that is a knock that has been on them in the past that they haven't been able to win these big games. Like you mentioned last year, they're only really good win was against Dayton in the NCAA, in the NCAA tournament. tournament. Yeah. And a lot of people see Dayton as, you know, a mid-major, though mm -hmm. they are a, a top program. But they Shockers were top 10 in Ken Palm last year, but didn't have a single top 25 win. So it probably could have been fair to say that the Shockers couldn't win the big game beforehand. Granted, and you made a good point, they just haven't had that many opportunities. Right. I mean, it's been in Kentucky a couple of times. You get two or three times. opportunities a year. Yeah. It seems like yeah, the big win against Ohio State. Then they, they did have that big win against KU as well. That was yes. that was a big one, um, but all, that's all tournament play. That's that's not. Yeah, th this had to be the biggest right. outside win. of the NCAA tournament. This yeah. is the biggest win they've had in I'd say three years at least. Yeah. So regardless it, whether it or not it was fair to say they can't win the big game, they can now. They, can. they did. They did, <laughs> and I expect more of these this season. Yeah. So. Am I blowing that up too much and calling it, say, a signature win? I, I don't think it's Greg Marshall's signature win, but it was a, a quality win they needed. Um, no, that's true, and that surprises me that you're yeah. saying that. Well, because you said these games don't matter. You're, you're right. You're <laughs> yeah. right. You're keeping me accountable. These non-conference wins don't matter. <laughs> I think we have them on video. We do. <laughs> uh, episode one. Um, and, and, and they don't, and, and I think in, in February we're going to be realizing how much they don't matter as much. But man, it was good to have one. It's good. It it's it's better good. to have one than to not. Have yeah, one. yeah, no doubt. Okay, so that so that's Baylor and, and the Shockers uh, were able, and I think also uh, on Baylor, Baylor ran a one three one zone defense that was fantastic. It was not only 
you know, setting up that, that zone to where they were giving the Shockers trouble in the areas they were covering. They also had their hands up, and they were swatting passes away. They looked good. That zone looked good. I wrote about this and said this was the best zone I think the Shockers had faced all season. Probably is, and probably yep. will be. And maybe, maybe Central Florida's will be better than that, but Baylor is just so long and athletic and mm -hmm. tall, and, and my goodness, all their guys seem to be 6'8 to 7 feet tall. Yeah. With you know seven foot wingspans, and so to win that game, when we we talked about their struggles in with the zone, yeah, and yeah. they were able to score points and succeed. That was it. The Shockers beat it. They beat the zone finally, and so I don't know if that's going to deter future opponents from playing a zone. I think we will still see that, especially in Probably. conference play. But it went a long way, at least for me, just as a spectator to say, oh, okay. A little peace of mind. I'd it's say. not kryptonite. That was <laughs> right. your word last yes. time. It's not the kryptonite anymore that it probably was uh, before that game. So good quality win there uh, against Baylor. Then the game that I overlooked, and I don't know, maybe the Shockers did as well, but South Dakota State, mm. which is a state, uh, <laughs> they are <laughs> came to Coke Arena and gave the Shockers a hard time. Yes. My goodness. You were at this game. You wrote the story. You had a great take on it. Okay. So I think, here's what happened. The Shockers were, were losing, and, and they, were, they were struggling. And down, at, down by 13 at one point yeah. in the second half. And in the second half, you, you can give them 10 minutes to have a flat night right. or whatever, but in the second half, they're losing to South Dakota State by 13 points. What in the world? Eventually, they come back and win. Okay, They, they, they finally get their act together. They, you know, um, South Dakota State was shooting lights out. You know, they were. They, they, they were you got to... Give them a round of applause yeah, because yeah. they they were amazing the first thirty minutes. They yeah. have this guy Mike Dom who was the NCAA yeah. scoring leader last year. He he was just unstoppable, and mm -hmm. they they had a chance to win that game. They really did. Well, okay, and so I I wonder. I think I'm not sure, but I think there's probably a lot of Shockers fans who are not happy about this game. I know Greg Marshall wasn't at halftime because we saw there's a, there's there's a video of that. There's a, there's a clip going around uh, Twitter and the internets that um, uh, Greg Marshall is storming through the bench, went through the bench. He to was get Moses to the that at halftime. Yeah, he was not happy. Um, you, and, and you're losing to South Dakota State at home, you shouldn't be happy, probably. Um, but you wrote about um, you're okay with that yeah. game. You're, and, and again, they came back and won, so that's a good thing. Why are you not upset about being down by 13 to, to South Dakota State, <laughs> unranked South Dakota State? Why does that not bother you? I guess I've just become more optimistic <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> as I've gotten older. Yeah. Not as negative as I used to be. <laughs> but even when the Shockers were down 8, 10, 13 in that second half, I, I was a little worried, mm -hmm. a little cautious, but I was yeah. like, at the end of the day, the better team usually wins. Yeah. And I knew they'd be. I knew there would be a run. I knew South Dakota State would cool off a little bit. And because the Shockers won, I feel this is really good for them going forward, because they have this experience coming back, just like they did against Cal and Maui. Mm -hmm. And so they they can win these games even if they're down 10, 15 points. Yeah. So going forward, even into the NCAA tournament, they can say, hey. Guys, we're down now, but we've done this before. We have experience with this, and it'll be good for them. Remember San Diego State. San Diego. I knew I was going <laughs> to do did that. It. He San did Diego it. State and South Dakota State, to me, they're the same thing. If you same, go there, same they're completely different. But those letters, S and D. Uh, no, I, I get that. Greg Marshall's going to say, remember that South Dakota State game. Yep. It's, they're going to be playing Kentucky. Um, hopefully in the, in the you know, round of eight this time. Yeah, not a round of 32. Um, and, and they're going to be down, and Greg Marshall's going to be like, remember South Dakota State. because yep. and, and here's why also, and I agree with you. I, it's, I know it's a better podcast and a better video when we don't agree and we can argue. But no, I agree, I agree <laughs> with you on this. Uh, it's not a big deal for this game. It's, it's, I'm not too worried about it. One, because we know, and, and we've known this for a long time with the Shockers, Everybody's going to bring their best game yes. against this team, especially the unranked opponents. And so, uh, who was it? Savannah State came in and tried to just jack up a bunch of threes, and because that, they knew that's the only chance they had. Okay, and the first well, ten minutes of that game, they did. It was close. They hit them. It was, okay, but then they cooled off quickly yeah. because they're Savannah State. The better um, team won at the yes. end of the day. South Dakota State came in and had pretty much the same approach: jack up a bunch of threes. Now it was more structured. Right. They were they going off a the ball screen. Offense. Yeah. But they hit them. 
Yep. They hit threes unbelievably. They shot what, over 60% in yes. the first half. Just and, insane. And I, that's a good number because I wasn't sure about that because I was not at the game. I was not watching it on TV because of the Cox Monopoly. There's, <laughs> there's a ramp there somewhere that I will do one other day. Um, so I had to listen on the radio. And poor the radio guys, they lost their stat monitor for most of the game. And so they couldn't tell us exactly how well they were shooting. But it was obvious. South Dakota State was hitting a lot of three-pointers. And so with a lot of three-pointers being shot and made, it just happens sometimes, yeah, right? It, it does. But still the best team won, the better team won. Was there anything that you saw in that second half that told you, okay, the the cosmic fairness is happening now. The law of averages is yes. returning. Yeah, yeah. Did you see, well, what was it about the second half? I think what really changed it was when the Shockers went to a full court press. Okay. They, they only got, I think they only turned a couple, or had a couple turnovers because of that. But it just, it changed the flow of the game. It mm. made San Diego State. No, no, no. South, South Dakota, Dakota there you State. Go. Yes. It just changed their whole offense, and <laughs> there could not be two more different places in the United States. But sorry, go ahead. Yes, I don't know what I was saying there, but it, it would have been good. <laughs> but yeah, it just—I I think the full court press yeah, changed yeah, things, yeah. and it just—they the Jackrabbits cooled off. I mean, you, you can't. I mean, you can, but it's really hard to shoot sixty yeah. percent throughout the entire yeah, game, no especially they were. They were eight for twelve shooting the three pointers in the yeah. first half, and you just you can't keep doing that. Yeah. Well, when I when I see good content out there, I'll tell you guys about it. Taylor Eldridge from the Wichita Eagle had a, had an amazing breakdown of how the the Shockers made an adjustment on the ball screen on the the screens around the perimeter, and they changed the way they guarded it. Uh, and I, you could see this; it, it was obvious, and Taylor did a good job of of showing it as well in his story. Uh, go, go look that up online. Um, but that's what made the difference. And you're right, there's that second half adjustment Greg Marshall made. Um, you know, you, and your story on Shockerland.com also talked about the, the different experiences now that the Shockers have had, and, and you've mentioned that as well. Um, this was just a good experience. This is one yes. they needed to let them know, yeah, you're ranked number, what is it, six now six. In, in the nation, but even unranked South Dakota State, if they have a good night, you, you gotta play some ball. Oh, yeah. You gotta come in here. Let me ask you this as well. Uh, we didn't talk about this in the pre-show, but whatever. Throwing it at you. Be ready. Um, the atmosphere in oh. Coke Arena. I, I, again, I was not there. I kept hearing about this. How Was it electric? What was it like being in the building? For most of the first half, it was pretty dead. Yeah, yeah no doubt. <laughs> and then the last five minutes of the first half, the crowd got into it because the Shackers made a couple of good plays. And then the second half, there was nothing for a while. Yeah, yeah. And then midway through the second half, Shockers came back to life, the crowd got into it, and it was just the most electric environment in Coke in the past two or three years. Wow. Just everyone wow. was standing, cheering loudly. My seats were in the very top row, yeah. so I don't always get to hear <laughs> everything that everyone else does, but it was loud up there, and so I, I can't even imagine how how loud it was down on the floor. Yes, breaking news, Shockerland.com does not have <laughs> press row access not yet. to the games. <laughs> we'll get there one day, yeah. maybe. Um, but in, in, the, in the meantime, yes. Um, I talked about this, uh, we, we did, maybe the first or second episode, about how, I, yeah, my, my, my big bold prediction for the beginning of the year was the Shockers are going to go undefeated at home. I did not see <laughs> it was, South it was, Dakota State A little shaky that. for this game. Um, but, and, and my reasoning behind it was, I think Shockers fans are just so ready um, for competition, for a good competitive home game which we just have not had, no. especially playing in the Missouri Valley. Um, there have been close games. There have been losses, but a lot of time it's either on the road or it's in postseason play, which is never you know at, on a home court. Um, so did, did we get a – my other job, we call it, oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Did we get a little pre-taste <laughs> of taste. what it might look like yes. when one of the top teams in the American Conference comes to town? Yes, I, I, I can't even imagine how electric Cook will be <laughs> yeah. when Cincinnati, SMU, Temple, Central Florida come to Wichita because the Shockers, Shocker Nation is fantastic. Mm -hmm. The fans cheer loudly. They, they, will, they will yell until they lose their voices like I did last <laughs> night. And we love it. it it's something yeah. to do. It's, it, it makes us happy. And when those great schools come to Wichita, it's just going to be bedlam. And can I say, I don't... This might be wrong, I don't know, but as, say, like a Shockers fan or a fan of whatever team, I would rather have a buzzer-beating win, a close win, 
than just another 35 point blowout. And we have had nothing, the last two years or a few years, we've had nothing but 35 point blowouts at home, uh, almost. There have been some scares. But, and that's, that should be, I guess. I know that's what Greg Marshall probably wants. He wants nothing but, you know, they, <laughs> he'll live a lot longer. every time. Yeah. But, um, it is so much more exciting when it's a competitive team. Now, you wish it was not, you, you know, you wish it was Oklahoma or Oklahoma State or right. uh, Cincinnati or, you know, one of the good teams rather than South Dakota State. But they prove, South Dakota State proved, they're, they're a good program. They're They've good. beaten some teams. They did get blown out by KU. Uh, we won't talk about that. But, um, yeah, so I think close games are good for fan experience and atmosphere in Coke Arena, which we have not had uh, in, in the past. And it's just a good experience, like you said, for tournament play, for, you know, down the road when you're, you're in a tight situation. Greg Marshall can say, remember this tight game, remember what we did, remember the comeback that we had. Um, so for all those reasons, you cover all those in your story on Shockerland.com. Um, it was a good experience, a it good was. win. Not, oh, how ashamed I am for only <laughs> beating South Dakota State by 10. No, there would have been shame if the Shockers had lost. Yeah. I don't yes. care what the margin yeah, of victory yeah, yeah. is. If you win, it's a win, yeah. and you move on. And they, they can – their defense wasn't the best in the first half, but it was adequate, and so they can they can make some changes, improvements. But for me, I think it was, it was a blessing because here they just were coming off of a huge win mm -hmm. at Baylor. Mm -hmm. They have two more Big 12 opponents next at Oklahoma State and then home against Oklahoma – and so this was kind of a wake-up call to say, hey, you guys, Shockers are good, mm. but you're not all that, and you can lose if you don't bring your A game. Yeah. And so I think this team is going to be extra motivated now on Saturday, and they'll, they'll be yeah. ready to play. Now, they didn't have um, uh, Samaje. He yes. was, he was uh, sick or illness or, or some type of thing. He wasn't able to play. D did that make a difference? I mean, he's not a starter. But he, I mean, put up 31 the other night. Yeah. Um, did that make a difference, do you think? I think so. Yeah. I mean, he is, he is turned in to be the supreme backup point guard. And so when Fran Camp or Shamit Sid, he can go in there and he makes plays and yeah. he, he changes the ball game. He, he is so... He is a skateboarding shop and clothing he, brand established in New York City in April 1994. Okay. <laughs> so Siri just went off a on the phone. They're Would always like listening. I don't know why. Always listening. That's weird. Please okay. be quiet, Siri. Thank you. <clears throat> yeah. Anyway. Okay. See yeah. you later. <laughs> I don't know what just happened. The, the machines are listening. I've got like four Echo Dots coming um, oh, yeah, for Christmas. So. Shh, don't. I should have said that. Um, okay. <laughs> so we, uh, we w with Samaji not in there, what yes. my point was, he is such a different type of player and point guard from Landry Shamit and, say, Connor, who can also handle the ball as well. Um, I think it throws defenses. It does. Uh, when, when you can, it's such a change of pace. He's so quick, and, and I, the other guys are as well, but they play differently. I, and I heard this too. I don't know if you saw this. Landry Shamit kind of took control of his team and stood up at halftime um, of the Baylor game and you know, rallied the troops, so to speak. And that's, that, that's not a senior leader right there. You know, that's, <laughs> no, I, you know, but he, he is coming into that. Um, which was in many I think, ways he here. probably is a senior. Probably, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. Um, but uh, but yeah. So uh, anyway, all, all that to say, um, they uh, they escaped. Um, yes, and, and I'll just say one thing on mm -hmm. Haynes Jones. Mm -hmm. he, when he's not able to play, you end up having Austin Reeves and C.J. Yeah. Kaiser as the backup point guards, and they're they're very good players. They have their roles, but they are not as nearly as good as a ball carrier as Haynes Jones is. Yeah. And so it's just it's completely different. You have they're more game managers, they're more passing guards, while Haynes Jones can create plays and just control the yeah. offense. CJ, I, I think the jury's still out on what he's going to be and what he's going to develop into. He's still you know so new. Uh, I don't know enough about his game to see. But Austin, I, I like him as a spot up shooter. Yeah. I don't I don't like him necessarily as a floor general, so to speak. Um, not to say he can't do that, but, but I think he, he's more. Of, I think he's much yeah. better two guard than yeah. As a pure and and, and just like Connor, you know, um, right. I, I think I like him. Although Connor, we've seen him create a bit more, which I like. Uh, he's developed into a dual threat guy. As a lot well. more aggressive lately, which yeah. I, I yeah. love to see. Yeah, that's good. So all right, let's let's look ahead. You mentioned those Big Twelve games that are coming up, and and we do have Oklahoma State coming up. I, I told you the last time I paid attention, to Oklahoma State was Marcus Smart, <laughs> I think, and and that's been a while. A few years, uh, yeah. yeah. So, um, what do we know about Oklahoma State? What can we expect uh, on this game coming up Saturday, right? Saturday, yeah. yeah. It'll be in Stillwater. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, last year, the, the, the uh, Cowboys came to Wichita. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Big interest bank arena game. It was snowing outside. It was freezing to walk to the arena. We what? get there after a near blizzard, and the Shockers got blown out yeah. at home. Yeah. Which was super rare, super disappointing. Mm -hmm. Ruined my whole day. <laughs> I'm kind of over it. <laughs> Ruined Christmas. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, and so this is a chance for revenge for the Shockers. Yeah. I think they'll do it. Uh, the Cowboys were ranked, or they were predicted to finish dead last in the Big 12 this year. Mm. But they're I hate currently... Stuff, yeah, I hate preseason stuff. I hate preseason They're balls. currently, what, 7-1? and one. They're, Yes, or two, something like that. They're yeah, ranked yeah. Uh, 49th yeah. on Ken Palm, yeah. which is pretty decent it's to be a last bad. place team not in bad. the Big 12. So this will be a challenge for the Shockers, but it, I think it's one they can overcome if they play their best. Yeah, here's the deal. Oklahoma State has played no nobody except... Texas A&M ranked number 16 in the nation, and they got blown away by them. Yep. So Oklahoma State lost to Texas A&M. Uh, it was not close. And so the one test they've had, they failed at it. And uh, Texas A&M was ranked 16th. So Shockers, ranked number 6, uh, theoretically should have no problem. Then again, this is a Big 12 team. They're you know, Big 12 talent there. So and it's a way game. Yeah, it's, so it's, you, it's on the road. You never know. Yeah, but I, th I think... Um, I think Possibly, I won't say this for sure, possibly the reason the Shockers maybe had a bit of trouble against South Dakota State was because they knew a revenge game was coming up, yeah. Oklahoma State on the road, and then Oklahoma as well, further down the road, uh, but, but and that one's going to be here in Wichita. Um, but yeah, I, I wonder about that. So uh, what do you think about this Oklahoma State game? I, you're, I, it sounds like you're predicting a Shockers win. I am, yes. I, I think the Shockers yeah. will win by at least eight, possibly double digits. Okay. Um, and that's all I have to say about that. <laughs> I don't know <laughs> anything about, about Oklahoma State. That's fine. Big 12, whatever. Yeah. I it'll wish be, it'll other be a Big good, 12 teams. It'll probably be a top 50, <clears throat> top 100 win if the Shockers can pull it off. And road victories yeah. now account for a little more with the mm -hmm. new NCAA selection committee standards. So it, it'll be good for them. Mm -hmm. So that being said, let, let's wrap up the show like this. I want to... Uh, we'll, we'll put a poll out there. I love the, the Twitter polls we do. I think yeah. they're a lot of fun. We get a lot of good response from them. Follow us on Twitter, at Shockerland. Uh, you can find us there, and we're, we're giving our analysis and updates during games, but also just during the week as well. Kyle does a good job also uh, just keeping us up to date on what's going on, on around the American Conference and seeing what the, those teams are doing. There's a mo an emoji for every game, <laughs> every situation. Uh, I have a little awesome. bit too much fun with it. But <laughs> it's good. It's good, good stuff. So, um, but anyway, so we'll, we'll put a poll up at, uh, as this episode goes live of what is, what is the worst part of the Shockers game day experience. Okay? And uh, I have to preface this by saying... Yeah. It's fun to go. Nine percent of it is fantastic. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's but there good, are some areas that need to be there are, improved. Possibly. Let me tell you this. Especially here's my rant. I, I love rants. So I'll go off on one. <laughs> so especially NCAA and NFL. Mm. Um, I'd rather just watch the game at home. And I know that that sounds like I'm not a true fan, and maybe so. <clears throat> but especially in football, you are so far away from the action. Football, yes. Yes, it's, that's what I'm saying. NCAA different. and NFL. Okay. NCAA football. football. Yeah, I should, should have said that. You are so far away from the action. What's the point? And then I'm not going to get a replay unless it benefits the home team and the and the guy, <laughs> the intern running the scoreboard, figures out how to throw a, you know one angle of a replay up on the scoreboard. Uh, I don't know what's happening when it comes to injuries. I don't know the analysis. I'm not seeing the stats. For football, I'd rather just watch it at home uh, because the the expense, the the. All that for basketball, and especially in Coke Arena, that is still an awesome atmosphere. Oh yeah, that is no, so much no fun. No bad seat in the arena. No, you can be top row. I've a lot of my tickets are from friends who have student section or general admission, so I'm up by the band getting blasted in my ear. But uh, it's still fun. Yeah. It's, it's a good time. But there are some things that fans have to deal with. So what is the worst? Uh, we've got a list here. What's the worst part of a shocker game day experience? Is it the parking? Mm. And, and and I'll say this with the parking, unless unless you got access, unless you're rich or you got, got access, some, some change. you're parking at, at Tyler Field or whatever it's called, X Stadium, yep. um, at the baseball field, and you're walking half a mile in the dark, and it's freezing cold. The uh, winter time, it's, in the winter. <laughs> it's not such a fun walk. Man, that's, that's it is sure. a long walk. So is that the worst? And you're dealing with traffic, too. Um, and, and so is that the worst part? Or is it uh, security? What's going on with security? 
Yeah, I can't say I'm a big fan of the new security measures. <laughs> I'm kind of a person who doesn't like to be, you know, I haven't been patted down, thankfully, okay. but I don't like walking through metal detectors. Yeah. I don't like having to take out all the things from my uh, pockets, so any of them into a tray, like I'm some criminal. Uh, I had a little, not really an incident, but two games ago, I was walking through, I took out everything in my pockets, like I was supposed to, and then after I walked through the metal detector, the security guy says, can you please remove your hat for me? And I've never had to remove a hat before through security, and so I'm, I'm putting this stuff back into my pockets, knowing that after I do this, I'm going to take my hat off. Right when I'm about to take my hat off, he yells at me to say, please, can you take your hat off again, or something like that, raise his voice. So I kind of had a nice uh, back and forth with him, but I ended up taking my hat off, but it, it just kind of put a damper on the next few minutes, and so... <laughs> it's just it's a shame that we have to do that it as a society. Is. I understand why we do it. It makes a lot of people feel safe and I get that, but it's just I appreciate and I think that's it. I think it's the feeling of being safe. I yeah. appreciate cuz I have, you know, I mean I I sneak in. I shouldn't I don't sneak in. <laughs> it's not intentional. My uh, I don't I don't like wallets. They're they're too thick. They're too I have a money clip and I, I, as a gift, I was given a money clip that has a little pocket knife that extends out of it. Oh. Um, really cool. I like it. I've I've flown on airplanes with that. Thing. It's not a big deal. <laughs> Could I do some damage? I suppose, maybe, but probably not. Um, but I wish, and, and I, every time I get through, I don't even think that I have it because I forget that it's right. there. But I go through and I'm like, oh, Whoopsie. that got through. What else got through? You know, so yeah, it's, it's, it's so the illusion much of, this, of it's the perception. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, I, I, I appreciate the attempts. I appreciate there's something. Here, and I've mentioned this before. What I also don't like about it, I go and buy a bottle of water from the concession stand, and they take my cap. Yeah. They take the cap off. What am I going to do with a cap? <laughs> and I know it's I'm... apparently a new rule with being an American, and I know a lot of people have griped about that, and rightfully so. Yeah, they. Um, well, Intrust Bank Arena does this too, so yeah. it's not. Ju I'm not just picking on Coke Arena or anything like that. But come on, it's like taking your shoes off. There was one outlying incident one time. I know it's, it's a shame. What am I going to put in? I, I just okay. Anyway, we're, <laughs> but but okay, security and all that, all, all that, the hassle you got to go through. Okay, here's <laughs> we are in first world problems now. Okay, <laughs> one of my other problems, we mentioned when you park, you've got to walk so far, and part of the problem with walking so far is it's freezing cold in Wichita in the winter, especially because of the wind. Oh, I have yeah. facial hair exclusively because of the wind. I just need protection. So. What I do, of course, is when I'm getting ready for a game, I f figure out, okay, what color are we wearing? Are we all doing, are we doing a yellow out? Are we doing a black out? Are we doing, you know, what are we doing? I put my uh, shocker shirt on, and then I get my heaviest winter coat. I, I throw a scarf on. <laughs> I'm, I grew up in Georgia. I'm, I'm not a cold weather person, so I bundle up. Then I get to the arena, and I, you think we're sitting close right now. You have this much space in your seat. It's a little tight. Okay, it is tight. And I get it and, it, and that's part of the atmosphere, and that's cool, but I take my coat off because I want my shirt, and it's warm in there. Thank you, Coke Arena, for having good atmosphere and, and heating. Um, <laughs> what do I do with my coat, okay? I put it in my seat, but then what if I want to sit down, okay? So now I'm sitting on my coat, or what generally happens is the arms fall down, I get beer spilled on them now because, you know, we got alcohol flowing now through Coke Arena. Um, it gets <laughs> it smashed, has happened. it gets crunched. Yep. I, what do I do? And again, first world problems I know, but there is no place to put my coat. And that's a struggle for me. Yes, it, it okay. is for you. But you have, I have a, a solution. I have a slightly different perspective <laughs> on that. Which is genius, and I love it because it's the cheap seat mentality. Go, go, yep, go. Yep, so we're... Again, my seats are very top row, so all that's behind me is a metal wall, and then to my right is a big air duct. And so, when I'm sitting, I sit right next to the air duct, so I cram my coat there. Okay, it's a nice good. little nook or cranny, whichever you prefer. But all the people to my left have ingeniously come up with a solution for the coat problem. And so, the last year or so, people have started to bring hooks uh, magnets, magnetic hooks to hang up on this metal wall, and they hang up their hook, uh, hang up their coats on the wall. So if, genius. If, if I'm up here, I look to my left, I see about ten to fifteen <laughs> coats just what? hanging up on the wall. So and, is and, this people who are in the last row with you? Yeah, okay. everyone in the last row. Okay. And so I, my brother and I, because we have the, our tickets together, and so we don't, we haven't done this yet, but. 
well, we're thinking about joining this kind of cult. And so <laughs> it's exciting. Uh, these people just leave their hooks up throughout the whole year. And they so leave them there. They leave them there. They don't get touched. No, nope. get taken. So it, oh, hopefully man. they don't after... The secret's out. <laughs> the secret has been revealed, but it's ingenious and at least... One row in Coke Arena. Where do you get these column. metallic hooks? Is that a store? Is that like a Walmart thing? Walmart, is that Target, Menards, where you go real probably. Or is there a guy on the street out on out on? I'm gonna the, start smuggling in the hooks. Hey, you want some hooks? I'm gonna smuggle in hooks and good bottle right here. caps from now on. <laughs> <laughs> Really well, the metal detector is not going to yeah. get a bottle cap. What if I dare you? Fill your of plastic, I dare Pepsi, you. and Mountain Dew. The next caps. time, the next time you're at a game, go buy a bottle of water, <laughs> and as they're taking it off, you you take it from them, you pull your own yep. bottle cap out, Do and it. just screw it back on. What would happen? Nothing. Oh man, who's going to see that? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you're gonna I feel so that. much I better feel. about What's yourself. Yeah. I guarantee you. And just it. strut off, and it, you know, I mean, the concession workers making minimum wage. You're like, I don't care, whatever. But <laughs> oh man, sticking it to the man. Okay. Yeah. And the last, the, the last thing that may be the worst part of game day experience, um, the concessions. Probably we talked about concessions already. The prices. Okay, there are some outrageous prices. This is not exclusive to Coke Arena. No. I think it's pretty much. Every, it's universal if you go to a sporting every event. Every sporting event outside the Masters tournament in Augusta, Georgia, because I grew up That's there, and, and they have like you can get a drink for like a buck or two, and 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 it's a souvenir cup. You keep the cup, which is amazing. But Coke Arena has some outrageous prices. Now I, I'm not one to buy concessions, <laughs> but my brother bought some mozzarella sticks a week or two ago. Eight dollars. You think okay, eight dollars. You're gonna get you're gonna get a fair amount of mozzarella sticks. How many did he get? He got four. <laughs> four. Four just mozzarella sticks. Small, normal size mozzarella sticks for, for eight, eight bucks. bucks. Wow. To me, that's yeah. not a very good value. Why well, Sonic I, is I, right I, down the road. <laughs> <laughs> you can get Start them there. smuggling in some food now <laughs> with those caps and hooks. Oh, but man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I, I don't really know what the price for beer is or what. Pop are you pop so you're not a you're not a eat the meal at the game kind of guy. I eat right before I come to the game, and then That's as smart. soon as I leave, I either smart pick up Chipotle or yeah. eat something at home. Generally, what I'm doing, or what my wife will, will do, is go get a drink. If if it's anything, it's a drink. And what I really like to do. I'll, especially I'll do this at like Royals games or Chiefs games or whatever, is you get the big drink that's a souvenir cup <laughs> that you get to take home. And at Royals games, you get to take that cup back and get a refill, one free refill. I don't know if the Shockers do that. I'm trying to remember. I haven't bought one this I year. It's, it's been years. I, I, I think they have in the past. I'm not sure if they're doing it this year. But uh, but anyway, yeah, that's about all I'm going to get because I know it's a ripoff. And it's like when you go to the movies. Oh, yeah. I, will, I will go. I've and, smuggled in food into a movie theater. I, I've, I've smuggled it like... I'll wait just to stick it to them. I got a can of root beer or a Mountain Dew or something. I wait till it's like the please silence your cell phone. It's real quiet, and you, just, you know, you so just you gotta wait stick for like to the, the big THX <laughs> yes. sound to come up, and it's <laughs> and you just pop it. Yeah, um, I no, I have no problem. But yeah, that. winter time is the best time to smuggle. Yourself. Um, yeah, you get the the, the big pockets, big heavy coats. Um, but yeah, and and now. I used I love Warren Theaters. Now it's Regal, and Regal is you know the big souvenir cup you would get at the Royals game. That's a small for, for Regal. Those cups are massive. We've slightly changed <laughs> as a society. Yeah, we have. That's it's, that's a good thing. We, just watch Wall E. It's mm. it's that movie all over. Um, no, anyway, so we'll put that poll up if you can. Yeah, follow. let us know what you think. Uh, what's the worst part? Can or if be you, improved? Or if yeah, and if you have uh, any other uh, other things you want to throw in there, to make the list. Uh, find us on Twitter, uh, at Shockerland, on Facebook as well, uh, Shockerland there, and then Shockerland.com has all of our content, all our stuff. Um, good stuff. Yeah, we, we covered a lot there. So we'll be with you all season long, so make sure you're following us and checking out the stories and what we're doing. Um, if you've got any topics, any questions, we listen, we can talk Shockerland. Uh, shot men's basketball for the Shockers. We could talk mozzarella sticks all day long. We'll, we'll, you know, whatever. We topic a whole you want podcast to go. on mozzarella sticks. I could do it. I you could probably could. Uh, but uh, anyway, for Billy, for Kyle, I'm Billy, and uh, thanks for joining us on Shockerland again.